here's another example for us to look at. I picked a problem that looks like it might be pretty difficult, but we have some good rules and some good steps that we've got going that's going to really make this problem manageable. So where do we start? We start with, as always, these exponents that are outside of parentheses, working them into each exponent inside the parentheses. And I know that even if I don't see an exponent, I should think that it has an exponent of 1, that I don't overlook it as I'm working in these exponents. And in this first set of parentheses, we see a negative coefficient, negative 6. So I'm going to begin a big fraction here. This negative 6 I'm rewriting as negative 1 times 6. And each of those gets an exponent of 2, this exponent that I'm working in. Next, we have x. That has exponent of 2. y to the power of positive 6. And z to the power of negative 4 as we multiply that exponent in. The next set of parentheses, check out this exponent, 0. That's actually a nice thing to see. It's going to make this entire term right here, not, not really a term, but this entire expression equal to 1. So I have a times 1 in this multiplication. I could even lose that times 1 because we know times 1 will not change this fraction that we've got going so far. So an entire expression right here wiped out because of that exponent 0. Let's move on to this set of parentheses. An exponent of negative 3 we're working in. That will make x to the power of negative 6, y to the power of positive 9, and z to the power of negative 12. Okay, our numerator is taken care of. We're making progress. I'm not afraid to do a lot of rewriting because I know there are many opportunities to make a mistake in these problems. So if I do a little rewriting and that keeps me on track, I think it's worth it. Well, let's take care of this denominator. Negative 3, I'm working into the 4, and then to the x, so that becomes x to the power of positive 3, y to the power of negative 6, z to the power of positive 6. Last, this set of parentheses, and I see another negative coefficient, so this negative 9 I'll call negative 1 times 9, and each one gets this exponent of negative 1. Then moving on to the variables, x to the power of negative 2 times negative 1, that will make x to the power of positive 2, y to the power of negative 1, and now z to the power of negative 2. What would be our next step after we've taken care of all of these exponents that are outside of parentheses? And if you're looking at, well, I do still see sets of parentheses, I'm saying it's okay. They're just um, really helping us stay organized with these numbers, and we'll be taking care of those pretty shortly. In terms of these exponents outside of parentheses, those are all taken care of. Our next move is that we begin to move these factors that have negative exponents. And I see lots of pieces and parts here that I need to sort through. Let's start with a, a new blank fraction. And one at a time, I'll decide if it's something that needs to stay where it is or if it needs to be relocated. And I relocate those factors that have negative exponents. So positive exponent stays good. You're in the numerator, stay in the numerator. Same thing with this 6 to the power of positive 2. That will stay where it is, and we'll just move right along. This one's going to stay in the numerator. y to the 6th, stay in the numerator. I'm, I'm beginning to pay a little bit more attention to my organization. I'm basically just trying to have all my numbers out in the front of this fraction, all the space here for x's, and then y's, and then z's. So as I go through each of these factors, I'm going to try to be a little bit more organized with where I put them, just because I have so many of them. When I look at this z to the negative 4, I know that becomes a z to the positive 4 in the denominator. And I'll just put it back here, just sort of setting it up for how our answer would look, with coefficient first, and then x's and y's, and then z's. But let's keep rolling here. x to the power of negative 6, so we want to move that to the denominator. Y to the power of positive 9, that should stay in the numerator. Here's z to the power of negative 12, that should be moved to the denominator. All right, the top's taken care of. Let's go through all these factors down in the denominator. 4 to the power of negative 3, so it needs to be moved. 
This time we're moving from denominator up to the numerator. x to the power of positive 3, so it can stay where it is in the denominator. Here is a factor that we need to move, so this becomes y to the positive 6 up in the numerator. z to the power of positive 6. It has a positive exponent, so it stays where it is in the denominator. Just put it down here. Now we've got some negative exponents, so we're moving again. Negative 1 to the power of negative 1. So I'll move that up into the numerator and make it negative 1 to the power of positive 1. And a little reminder that when we do the moving, we know we move if it has a negative exponent. And when we move it, we change that exponent into a positive. But the actual base does not change. If it's negative, it stays negative. 9 to the power of negative 1. We need to move that also up to the numerator. Just squeeze that in there. x squared, positive exponent. It can stay in the denominator. Here's y to the negative 1. We need to move that. And z to the negative 2. We need to move that also. Everything now has a positive exponent. And I'm ready to begin to put the numbers together and then the variables. So let's get a little space. I'm just going to take everything I have here and just move it up. Now I'll create another blank fraction, and I'll begin to put these numbers together. Let's deal with the sign first, and that would be looking at these negative ones. How many total negatives do we have? We've got one and two more. Total of three negatives. So will our answer be positive or negative? Odd number of negatives means the answer is negative. So those three negatives tell us that our answer is negative. I'll just throw the negative sign out front, and, and that's taken care of. I don't need to worry about the negatives for the rest of the problem. Let's deal with these numbers. We have 9 times 36 times 64, and those all multiply together, 20,736. Let's put together our x's. I could say, oh, cancel this x squared with that x squared, and I would just see a total of 9x's in the denominator. I could definitely do that. Or our other approach is to say total up what we've got down here. 2 plus 6, 8, with 3 more, 11. So a total of 11x's down here with 2 up in the numerator. When we find our difference, that will be a difference of 9, and that will end up in the denominator. So a couple different ways we could look at it to arrive at this x to the 9th in the denominator we move over to the y's, they're all up here in the numerator, so we're just totaling these up. We have 6 plus 9 is 15, with another 6 is 21, and one more to make 22. So y to the power of positive 22 up in the numerator. And now let's look at the z's. What's our total in the denominator? 6 plus 4, 10, with another 12, so we have 22 in the denominator with 2 up in the numerator. So our difference of 22 and 2, that's a difference of 20. And we have more z's in the denominator. So that z to the 20th belongs in the denominator. Well, all that's left really is the cleanup. Make sure that we don't have any negative exponents, and we don't. And that negative sign is, is A-OK. -okay. That, that poses no problem. We have our uh, this 20,736 in the numerator with no number aside from 1 in the denominator, so we can't simplify the fraction, so we're, we're good there. I guess I'll just trim down the fraction bar, and there's our answer.